ಎಲ್ರಿಗೂ ನಮಸ್ಕಾರ ವೇದಿಕೆ ಮೇಲೆ ಉಪಸ್ಥಿತರಿರುವಂತಹ ನಮ್ಮೆಲ್ಲರ ಗೌರವಾನ್ವಿತ ಮಹಾರಾಜರು ದೇಶದ ಹಲವಾರು ರಾಜಸಂಸ್ಥಾನಗಳ ಇತಿಹಾಸಗಳನ್ನು ಕಂಪೇರ್ ಮಾಡಿದಾಗ ನೋಡಿದಾಗ ನಮ್ಮ ಮೈಸೂರಿನ ಮಹಾರಾಜರು ಅತ್ಯಂತ ಶ್ರೇಷ್ಠ ಆದರ್ಶ ಪಂಕ್ತಿಯನ್ನು ದೇಶದ ಎಲ್ಲ ರಾಜಮನೆತನಗಳಿಗೆ ಸ್ವಾತಂತ್ರ್ಯ ಪೂರ್ವದಲ್ಲೂ ಹಾಕ್ಕೊಟ್ರು ಸ್ವಾತಂತ್ರ್ಯ ನಂತರದಲ್ಲೂ ಅದೇನು ಮಾಡಿಕೊಂಡು ಬಂದಿದ್ದಾರೆ ಕರ್ನಾಟಕದ ಜನ ಯಾವಾಗಲೂ ಕೂಡ ಕೃತಜ್ಞತೆಯಿಂದ ನೆನಪಿಸ್ಕೊಳ್ಳುವಂಥ ರಾಜ ಕುಟುಂಬ ನಮ್ಮ ಮೈಸೂರು ಒಡೆಯರ್ ಸಂಸ್ಥಾನ ಇವತ್ತು ಮಹಾರಾಜರು ಈ ಕಾರ್ಯಕ್ರಮಕ್ಕೆ ಬಂದಿರುವಂಥದ್ದು ನಮ್ಮೆಲ್ಲರ ಜೊತೆಗೆ ಮದನ್ ಮೋಹನ ಮಾಳವೀಯರ ಕಾರ್ಯಕ್ರಮದಲ್ಲಿ ಬಂದಿರುವಂಥದ್ದು ಬಹಳ ಸಂತೋಷದ ಸಂಗತಿ ನನ್ನ ಗೌರವಾನ್ವಿತ ನಮಸ್ಕಾರಗಳನ್ನು ಮಹಾರಾಜರಿಗೆ ಸಲ್ಲಿಸಿ ಶ್ರೀ ಅನುರಾಗ್ಜಿ ಶ್ರೀ ತಿಪ್ಲೇಜಿ ಮಂಚ್ಪರ್ ಉಪಸ್ಥಿತ ಸಭಿ ಮಹಾನುಭಾವ ಅವರ ಕಾರ್ಯಕ್ರಮೇ ಪಧಾರೆ ಮದನ್ ಮೋಹನ್ ಮಾಳವೀಯ ಜಿ ಕೆ ಸಭಿ ಅಭಿಮಾನಿ ಅವ್ರ ಬಂಧುವರ್ಗೂ ಮೇ ಧನ್ಯವಾದ ಕರ್ತಾ ಹೂ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಬ್ರಾಟ್ ದಿ ಮೆಮೊರಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದಿ ಸ್ಪಿರಿಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಮಾಳವೀಯ ಜಿ ಟು ಬೆಂಗಳೂರು ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಆರ್ಗನೈಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ವೆರಿ ಮೀನಿಂಗ್ಫುಲ್ ಸೆಲೆಬ್ರೇಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ಅ ಯುಗ ಪುರುಷ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಟ್ರೂ ಸೆನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಟರ್ಮ್ ಇನ್ ಮೈ ಸಿಟಿ ಆಫ್ ಬೆಂಗಳೂರು ಸೊ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಟು ಆಲ್ ದಿ ಆರ್ಗನೈಸರ್ಸ್ ಅಟ್ ದಿ ವೆರಿ ಔಟ್ಸೆಟ್ ಐ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ವಾಂಟ್ ಟು ಅಪಾಲಜೈಸ್ ಎಟ್ ದ ವೆರಿ ಬಿಗಿನಿಂಗ್ ಫಾರ್ ಎ ಟರ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಅಪ್ ಅ ಲಿಟಲ್ ಲೇಟ್ ಟು ದ ಪ್ರೋಗ್ರಾಮ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ಬಿಟ್ವೀನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಕಮಿಂಗ್ ಬ್ಯಾಕ್ ಟುಡೇ ಈಸ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ದಿ ಜಯಂತಿ ಆಫ್ ಅಟಲ್ ಬಿಹಾರಿ ವಾಜಪೇಯಿ ಜಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಬೀನ್ ಅ ರನ್ನಿಂಗ್ ರೇಸ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಮಾರ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಸೊ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ನೌ ವೆನ್ ಐ ಸ್ಯಾಟ್ ಆನ್ ದ ಸ್ಟೇಜ್ ದಟ್ ಐ ಹ್ಯಾಡ್ ಅ ಚಾನ್ಸ್ ಟು ಕ್ಯಾಚ್ ಅ ಬ್ರೆತ್ ಸೊ ದ ವಾಸ್ ಅನ್ ಇನಾಗ್ರೇಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ಅ ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಚು ಆಫ್ ಅಟಲ್ ಜಿ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಫ್ಯೂ ಕಿಲೋಮೀಟರ್ಸ್ ಅವೇ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ದ ಚೀಫ್ ಮಿನಿಸ್ಟರ್ ವಾಸ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ಸೊ ಐ ಹ್ಯಾಡ್ ಟು ಗೋ ಮೇಕ್ ಎ ಪ್ರೆಸೆನ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಪ್ರೋಗ್ರಾಮ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಕಮ್ ಬ್ಯಾಕ್ ಸೊ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಟು ದಿ ಆಡಿಯನ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಟು ದಿ ಆರ್ಗನೈಸರ್ಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ಇಂಡಲ್ಜಿಂಗ್ ಮೈ ಬಿಹೇವಿಯರ್ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಸೆನ್ಸ್ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ದೋ ಐ ವಾಸ್ ಗಿವನ್ books that scholars like krishnamurthy ji have written about uh, malviya ji the last few days i was uh, shuttling between three four states so i couldn't do full justice to all the literature that i was presented with about malviya ji but when i was in school it was my father who introduced me to the life and works of malviya ji and since then he has his life and his thoughts and his life message has had an indelible impression on me so drawing from the memory of what my father had told me about malviya ji i would like to present before all of you a few thoughts on why madan mohan malviya ji is and will remain a eternal source of inspiration for the young of bharat friends when we look at the modern political history of india especially the years around the indian independence movement we will see that there were great stalwarts who were multifaceted personalities who led and contributed tremendously to the cause of the nation and were the inspirators behind the indian national renaissance or the resurgence of bharat one such towering personality who accomplished in one life that most can only dream of accomplishing in a hundred was pandit madan mohan malaviya 
he was of course a great patriot he was an exceptional lawyer a voracious journalist was an institution builder was an educationist par excellence was a full time mass political leader he was also a very educated critic of art culture and music he was also a social reformer he was also a linguist whose expertise and knowledge and scholarship in sanskrit in hindi is respected even to this day not only that because of his intense love and passion to work among children and young people through the hindustan scouts and guides that he founded in india he also is credited to have greatly contributed to the language of moma me which is one of the languages that is used by the scouts and guides in their communications so here we are encountering a person who was a busy political leader the only president of the indian national congress to have occupied the office of the president four four times before independence because after independence we know what happened to the indian national congress and it's only one family which could occupy the president not uh, i mean forget multiple times just even once but this was the depth of pandit madan mohan malaviya's personality his entire life revolved around four important ideals if one were to summarize the four causes that inspired him for which he gave his life blood it's swadharma swabhasha swadeshi and swarajya and it was for these four causes and ideals that pandit ji lived he worked and he gave his every ounce of energy and it was for these four ideals that he led movements fought he built institutions and he groomed young people who would take forward and carry forward the legacy to strengthen these four causes if one were to understand or to analyze the two major contributions if you know at least when i look at his life there are two things that can be called the most important as well as i dare say the irreversible legacy of pandit ji one was the bharati karan of indian politics the second was bharati karan of indian education until madan mohan malaviya's entry as the president of the indian national congress the congress party then was more or less a petition giving institution that was anxious to not upset the british bosses even the anthem or the the song that was played at the indian national conference indian national congress conferences was in praise of the british crown it was only after the presidentship of madan mohan malaviya that it was changed to vande mataram in respect of the motherland this is just one instance of how pandit ji indianized the political discourse and how he brought to political mainstream the causes and issues that concerned the masses of this land 
most importantly at very important junctures in the country's history when wittingly or unwittingly the leaders of the then indian congress tried to arrive at compromises and negotiations which weren't in the best interest of the country in the long term and in the big picture it was the voice of pandit madan mohan malaviya which cautioned warned agitated and also ensured that the indian national congress never compromised on the important causes of hindus of this country and the cause of bharatiyata in this country he was one of those foremost political leaders the political visionary who understood the cost the nation and the civilization will have to pay for unmindful appeasement of the minorities the whole bending over backwards of the indian national congress of that time to win over a section of the minorities even led to the most tallest of leaders to even consider supporting the cause of the communal separate electorates and also the support the congress then extended to the khilafat movement pandit madan mohan malaviya vociferously with courage of conviction opposed both of these moves he said that the communal the communal electorate the separate electorate for muslims will lead to the partition of the country and must be nipped in the bud through his writings through his speeches and through his activism he made sure that the voice of the patriots the voice of the nationalists were heard seriously by the political class of that day and he ensured that this did not take place a massive credit must go to pandit madan mohan malaviya to for having ensured for having protected the integrity of the country's civilization we cannot even imagine the cost that the country would have had to pay if that had actually taken place and had materialized that time because even after stopping something a disaster of that kind we witnessed in 1947 the partition of the country imagine what would have happened what would have been the nature of the country's polity today if it was not stopped that time in the same way all of us know what happened with the support the congress then extended to the khilafat movement all of us have read about the bloody mopla riots that took place in kerala with ani besant baba saheb ambedkar pandit mahadan mohan malaviya was also one of those important voices who wrote and brought to the attention of the country at large and the global media at large at that time the plight of those who were victims of the bloody communal riots that took place in the southern part of the country it was because of this reason that pandit ji also established the hindu mahasabha because he felt that indian politics very clearly essentially needed a force that will protect bharatiyata and the four swars that he stood for swadharma swadeshi swarajya and swabhasha and these were the four ideals for which he strived his whole life friends while this was his contribution to bharati karan of the indian polity his even more outlasting legacy is in the area of bharatiya bharati karan of indian education of indianization of indian education there is just one quote from anand kumar swami one of india's highly celebrated philosophers and educationists while he critiqued the british education system and i just want to quote this before you because that will make us realize and truly appreciate the contribution and the significance of pandit madan mohan malaviya's work in establishing the bhu 
This is what Anand Kumaraswamy says about the British education. He says, and I quote, a single generation of English education suffices to break the threads of tradition and to create a nondescript and superficial being deprived of all roots, a sort of intellectual pariah who does not belong to the East or the West, the past or the future. Of all Indian problems, the educational is the most difficult and most tragic. The English education destroys all capacity for the appreciation of Indian culture. Speak to the ordinary graduate on the ideals of the Mahabharata. He will hasten to display his knowledge of Shakespeare. Talk to him of religious philosophy and you will find that he is, in, he is an atheist of the crude type common in Europe a generation ago. Not only has he no religion, but he is as lacking in philosophy as the average Englishman. Talk to him of Indian art. It is news to him that a, such a thing exists. Ask, to, ask him to translate a letter written in his own mother tongue and he will not know it. He is indeed a stranger in his own land. There perhaps could not have been a much fiercer but a more truthful criticism of the British education system than this. It was to reverse this and it was to correct this very serious malaise because it was through education that the next generation of Indians would be created, groomed, that Pandit Madan Mohan Malaviya realized the need for creating an institution that would give Indians education in the spirit of Bharatiyata and which is why he founded the, Bhar the Banaras Hindu University. Even to this day, it is one of the largest universities in Asia and this and his vision of education was not just traditional. He wanted to give the most modern of science, technology and engineering and couple it and infuse it with the millennia old spirit of what Bharatiya ethos stood for. This happy harmony, this happy marriage between what was earlier called the Orient and the Occident, the East and the West, the past and the future, this was what Pandit Madan Mohan Malaviya created and institutionalized in the BHU. And this perhaps will be his most important legacy to which all of India will always be beholden and will be grateful for. <laughs> Friends, Panditji's personality was a stark reminder that Vidya Dadati Vinayam and Vinaya Datadi Patratam. We have seen that people who are blessed with opportunities of either great education or scholarship or wealth or power generally tend to forget humility. But Madan Mohan Malaviya became Mahamana because Vinamrata was the crowning glory of his personality. <laughs> this humility, which came as a result of his scholarship, as a result of him seeing the world and the country at large, was what enabled him to create an institution of this kind. We all remember how when he went to seek donations for the BHU to the Nizam of Hyderabad, the Nidama, Nizam of Hyderabad humiliated him by throwing slippers at him. Any lesser man would have considered it to be an insult to his ego or person 
and would have taken it very personally in a grudging manner. But because for Panditji, the cause that he espoused was more important than the person that he was, he took the slippers that the Nizam had thrown at him and in an act of bravery and daring, decided to auction those very slippers in the very empire, in the very Raj Samstha that the Nizam was controlling. And when that came to the attention of the Nizam out of embarrassment, he made grudgingly a contribution to the BHU and the staff quarters that we see in, Hydra, uh, the, in the BHU campus today as a result of this. Well, we don't have to say, or it's because we have the Maharaja of Mysore here, the stark difference is very clearly visible and it is something that we must remember. On one hand, we had a Nizam who threw slippers at Pandit Madan Mohan Malaviya when he went to beg donations for BHU. And on the other hand, we have the Mysore Maharaja who accepted to be the Vice Chancellor, the very first Vice Chancellor of Banaras Hindu University. The Chancellor, the Chancellor of the Banaras Hindu University. Through education and through activism and through humility, Panditji inspired a generation. In the opening remarks today, Sir mentioned about how Pandit Madan Mohan Malaviya was at the forefront of fighting for entry of Dalits into the temples, giving them mantra diksha, and also grooming and in a sense adopting people like Jagjeevan Ramji, who went on to become one of the greatest leaders of this country. He brought change, not through his speeches, but he brought change through his actions and through the kind of life he lived. So if one were to ask what is the message of Pandit Madan Mohan Malaviya, it is suffice to say that in his life you will find his message. Because he lived what he preached and what he practiced is what he lived. Perhaps that is why he was given the title of Mahamana. And Kalidasa defines who a Mahatma is. He says, Manasyekam, Vachasyekam, Karmanyekam, Mahatmanaha. Only that man whose manas, whose thought, whose words, and whose deeds are all the same is the man who is a Mahatma. Which is why Pandit Madan Mohan Malaviya was called the Mahamana by people as great as Mahatma Gandhi and Rabindranath Thakur himself. Friends, it is a matter of great disappointment and dismay that a man who was four terms the national president of the Indian National Congress who contributed so much to the cause of social reform in the country, who established the Banaras Hindu University, which is the Gangotri of Bharati Karan of the Indian education system, was deliberately ignored by the political establishment in the last 75 years. As a young political activist, it gives me immense joy and pride that it was my government and my prime minister who recognized the greatness of this man in 2014 and gave him Bharat Ratna, which he truly is. Not that Panditji's luminance had taken a setback because he had not been bestowed with the Bharat Ratna, but sometimes certain awards shine brighter when it is bestowed on the right people. And I would say that Pandit Madan Mohan Malaviya was always a Bharat Ratna. He, need not, he did not need 
the government of India to officially give him the status of Bharat Ratna. But the Bharat Ratna Prashasti became even more respectable and luminous because it was bestowed on a real Bharat Ratna like Pandit Madan Mohan Malaviya. And on behalf of all of you, and on behalf of the young of India, I thank the Honorable Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji for having corrected this very, very important historical wrong. I only want to say this and conclude that certain people and certain legacies cannot be erased howsoever hard a few vested interests may try because these certain persons never lived for themselves they always lived for a larger cause today as the country is embracing the national education policy the core of which is to provide a 21st century education policy for Indians rooted in Bharatiya ethos and traditions. It is the greatest tribute that the country can give to one of India's greatest educationists, Pandit Madan Mohan Malaviya. <laughs> Through the education policy, he will live. Through the Bharati current of Indian politics, Pandit Madan Mohan Malaviya will live. When the Ayodhya Ram Mandir will finally open doors in 2024 to millions of devotees all across the world through that Bharati current of Indian politics, Madan Mohan Malaviya will live. When children in tomorrow's schools and tomorrow's colleges will read Indian history, which is truthful, which is not whitewashed for political agenda, when they will feel proud of being Indians and Hindus in that sense of the term and they will aspire to be torchbearers and ambassadors of this great culture through that legacy and through that reality Pandit Madan Mohan Malaviya will live and he will live for a few hundred years. I thank the organizers once again for putting together this very important, very meaningful, very memorable program. I hope that in the coming years Whenever we remind ourselves and commemorate the memory and life of Pandit Madan Mohan Malaviya, we will find more young people in the audience, more young people who will take ownership of his legacy, more young people who will pledge to walk on the path that he treaded, more young people who will resolve to take the country and the society on the path and on the light that Pandit Madan Mohan Malaviya so dedicatedly and so sincerely shown all of us. Bharat Mata Ki Jai. Thank you once again. <laughs>